Praise the Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Father in heaven, for your mercies, your love, your grace, your kindness, Lord, for your provisions, Father. We are so thankful, Lord. Father, in a time, O oh God, that men are haters of God. In a time, O oh God, that men are lovers of themselves, Father. Father, in a time, O oh God, that is perilous, O oh God. Lord Jesus, you still found a people, Lord, that will call upon your name, Father. The people that desires your will in their life. A people that desires the end of this world system in their life, Lord. We are grateful, Father. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. As men are going to and fro, Lord, seeking for answers, oh God, we are at peace. Seated with you, Father. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. Amen. Father, as we approach your mercy seat, Lord, speak to us, Father. Amen. Speak grace, Lord, to our heart, Father. Speak life, Lord. Amen. May every ear that will hear the voice this hour, O oh God, May they come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, let it not be man speaking, Lord. May it be, O oh God, the voice of resurrection, Lord. Amen. The voice of a new life. Amen. The voice that brings about the end of the world and the beginning, O oh God, of a new world. Amen. Speak through your servant, Lord. Amen. Give ear and understanding to your sons and your daughters. Father, remember those, O oh God, that needs healing, Father. Remember them, Lord. O oh God, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Shall we turn our Bible quickly without wasting time? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's going to be a long reading because this is going to be a teaching. But I will, for a text, I'll just read it, verse 50. Then we'll come back to it and do the long reading. Verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. He said, Behold, I shall show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This morning I want to speak on hells of divine nature part three immortality i want to speak on immortality let somebody say amen to that amen. amen i want to specifically speak on immortality because there have been so much about immortality there has been a lot of controversies concerning immortality so by the grace of god this morning i want to speak on it because the nature that we are going to manifest is his own nature praise be the name of the lord Amen. it's his own nature that we are going to manifest now we are talking about hairs of divine nature 
a people that their desire and their will is to manifest Christ. The Bible says, when Enos was born, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Men began to desire the divine nature. Men that love righteousness. Men of peace. Men that, that love things that are good. Men that are just. Men that are not comfortable with what is going on in this world. The wickedness that is going on in this world. They began to call upon the name of the Lord. You know, the name of the Lord is his nature. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. So the name of the Lord is his nature. So these are men that their desire is to manifest the nature of God. This has nothing to do with the invisible God that the atheists believe that does not exist. It has nothing to do with the invisible Jesus that many believe that does not exist. This has nothing to do with the invisible Bible that many believe that does not exist this has to do with a people it has to do with a people you must be convinced beyond every reasonable doubt a people that their delight is to do the will of the father a people that their desire is to see a peaceful act their desire is to see love manifest on it. It is their nature. So it is not about the contention that is in the world today. It's not about that. It's not about the argument. When Paul was talking about he said this is without controversy. It is not about whether it is or whether it is not. It is about a people. They know it. They desire it. It is who they are. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says when Enos was born, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Men began to desire the expression of immortality. Glory to God. Now when we talk about immortality, we are talking about a nature. A nature that never began. It never started. Though you may not be aware of it now. Though you may have not been aware of it for many years you spent on it. And out of the blue, you hear a voice speaking and you become attracted to it. So, you may be aware of it today. It doesn't mean that it started today. It never started. So, when we talk about immortality, it never started. So, it is only a nature that belongs to God. So, if you are immortal, that means you did not just become immortal today. You did not just become immortal the day you received Christ. You did not just become immortal the day you had the truth. You have been immortal all this while, but you know nothing about it. So it's a life that never started. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many that have received him, to them that is given the power to become sons of God. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now before we go back, to 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go to John 3.16. It's a popular scripture. You see, in this time, because we have come to the end of time, we have come to the end of the world. You know, the end of the world happens in every time. It's, there was an end of the world in the time of Jesus. There was an end of the world in the time of Paul and Peter. And today there 
is an end of the world because there's a people that is bringing about the end of the world system and they become the beginning of the creation of god here and they be the one that are bringing the light of christ here and they are the anointed ones here you know when the bible talks about the anointed ones you think that oh these are ones that we are for known let somebody say amen to that yeah. they were for known listen when paul was explaining this he said according to his full knowledge so that why they anointed they came in here anointed because they were for known praise be the name of the lord they were for known they were chosen they were predestinated they were ordained praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. everything about them have been preordained the lord has ordained them their footsteps everything listen they came down here anointed they're the anointed ones the messiahs of the hour praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. they are these ones that the possessors of heaven and earth. Glory to God. These are the partakers of immortality. Being partakers doesn't mean that you are sharing. They are co heirs Praise be the name of the Lord. It is a nature that belongs to them. And they are sharing it with God. Praise be the name of the Lord. And they are here also to share that life with the world. Glory to God. Now let's go to John 3.16. My, we know the times are hard. Even men can no longer hear sound doctrines. Yes, we have come to the, that perilous times. Paul spoke about it. So in every time that the Lord is moving, it will come. There must be a perilous time. Praise be the name of the Lord. In our time also, we are experiencing it. It's a perilous time. Many have given up hope in God. We are not of those that give up hope. Because we are anointed. We are anointed. So we don't depend on the anointing of the season. We don't depend on the anointing of the hour. We came down here anointed already. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The messiahs of the hour. That's why when Jesus manifested, he never followed the religion of his time. There was a movement in his time. He never followed it. There was a light in his time. He never followed it. But he became the light of the day because he's the Messiah of the hour. The anointed ones. Praise be the name of the Lord. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his word into the world to condemn the world, but that by the word through him, by the word through him might be saved. He that believed on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds we are evil. So this is where I want to come out. He said, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deed be reproof. But he he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, and his deed may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You see, this is why they are rejecting him. So when somebody is rejecting him, don't bother yourself. Don't kill yourself over that. It's because their deeds, we are evil. They hate righteousness. Glory to God. You are the way you are because you love righteousness you came down here righteous 
You came down here a possessor. You came down here with his life. Anointed. You came down here anointed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember Daniel, Daniel was spoken about the anointing of the most holy. It is only the one that is just. Only the one that is holy. Only the one that loves righteousness can be anointed with the most holy. It is only the one that is perfect can grow in perfection. If you have not come to perfection, you are not yet perfect. And you want to grow in perfection. It's not possible. It doesn't work that way. So, Daniel spoke about the anointing of the most holy. A people that are being brought into the most holy place. A people that are being brought into the life of God. A people that are the mortality. They are bringing immortality to flesh. A people that desire to live the life of the Father on earth. And their nature is the nature of the Father. That's why the Bible says, it says they are always, they are groaning. Why are they groaning? Because they are not satisfied with this nature. They are not satisfied with this life. They are not satisfied the way they are. They are not satisfied with this condition. If you are one that hates righteousness, you need to change, you need to repent. Because the gospel is for those that love light. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's for those that love light. It's for warriors no matter how the devil will push them the more you push them the better and brighter they become praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. the more you press them the more righteous they become the more the devil put them to trial everything that they pass through becomes an ordination unto them they see it as ordained or then the part that the Father has written for them. Because they are the anointed ones. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. So that is why there is a kind of nature we must put on. There is a kind of, a kind of consciousness we must have. There is a kind of consciousness that we must have. You must walk consciously knowing that you are a son of god Amen. listen may not the world may look down on you is not important the more we look at you is not important inside of you is the life that the world needed to be saved captured inside of you when you enter into the most holy place you will find that which, we, which is in between the cherub. That is where you find the testament. It is the testament and the blood of that sacrifice that took us there that becomes that through which we overcome. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, this immortal life is given to us free. It's given to us free. Salvation is free. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's free. Everything about it is free. But the problem is the deception that is in the soul realm. That is where the problem lies. Is the deception, the deceit that is in the soul realm. Glory to God. So that is where the problem is. Is the deceit. We have a spirit that is willing. But we have a nature. A nature that is disobedient. That is where the problem lies. It lies in the nature. It lies in the soul. It lies in E. Before disobedience got to Adam, it started with Eve. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, the problem lies in your nature. That is where the problem lies. So, let's go back 
to our text, First Corinthians 15. It's going to be a, 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 a long reading because it's a teaching. We're going to start from verse 40. He said, there are also celestial bodies, there are also terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from the another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. Praise be the name of the Lord. When the Lord brought us down here, we did not come down here complete. But our completion was hidden. It was hidden within. Praise be the name of the Lord. Covered with a nature that is troublesome, a failed nature. But within, inside of that man, is the completeness of God. You know where that completeness lies? It lies in the spirits. Until you come to the place of that completeness. In Christ, you will continue to strive in your soul. You continue to strive in your nature. You continue to strive. So you must come to that place. Come to that completeness. The completeness that is in the spirit. Because out of the spirit, the woman was created out of the man. Why do you think there is a new heaven? There is an old heaven. There is a new earth. There is an old earth. Because the fallen nature has become the breeding of death. All oh, that is death. All oh, that is perverted. All oh, that is corruptible. All oh, that will pass away. Praise be the name of the Lord. So we must come to that place. Come to that place in the spirit of your mind. Must come to that place in the spirit of your mind. Where you are predestinated. Where the completion lies. Where you are anointed. That most holy place. If you don't come to that place, you will continue to strive in this nature. Because we are brought down with a nature that is corruptible. And it was done in hope. The Lord did it in hope. Because the Lord knows. He knows that there is a seal upon you. He knows that there is a mark. He knows that there is a mark upon you. There is a seal upon you. When the psalmist was explaining about this, he said, you will not allow your Holy One to come into corruption. You will not allow us to come into corruption. So no matter how deep you may have fallen in, no matter how weak you may have become, no matter how wicked you may have become, no matter how corrupted you may have become, praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will hear the voice of the Spirit and you will come up. Amen. You will hear His voice and you will come up. Now I want us to pay close attention. Is a teaching. Now listen. Let's go back there. There is something I want us to get here. Verse 
Verse 44, it is sold a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Because he said there is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. So Paul brought the difference between the two. The difference between the natural body and the spiritual body. And when you miss the understanding of what the body is, you miss everything. You miss it completely. Now listen. It is the spirit that determines the soul, the body, the heaven, and the earth, the sea, and everything. It is the spirit that determines it. And we are speaking about two spirits, two man, the first man and the last man, the first man and the second man, two men. Now pay close attention. You see why you must be complete in him. You must talk about being complete in him. Being in the spirit on the Lord's day. Being seated with him in glory. My. Because this outward man must pass away. So now, when somebody says that my spirit is seated in heaven and my soul is on earth, you miss it. You miss it completely. Because when you enter, go backward from where we read, this is what Paul made clear. Go back to verse 40. He made this clear. So don't miss it. He says, There is also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial, the glory of the celestial is one. There is oneness in Christ. So don't separate the body of Christ. The body of Christ is one. The glory of the celestial body is one. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The glory of the terrestrial is another. So don't miss this. The body of Christ is one. Is one. It's not different. Listen. Your spirit is not in heaven. And your soul is on earth. No, it's not that. Praise be the name of the Lord. It's not it. What happened was, you must come to that place in your understanding of, a, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to that place where it is a descending. Where it is a descending, not a falling down, not a falling away. It is a descending. And when it is a descending, there is going to be an ascension. Amen. You must come to that place. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. So those that teach you that the spirit is in heaven and the soul is on earth, they miss it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. They miss it. They miss it. They have not come to that place. Where heaven has come down on it. They have not come to that place. Where that which is on earth has truly put on heaven. Has truly been clothed with the heavens. Has truly put on immortality. Praise be the name of the Lord. They have not come to that place. They are yet operating in the realm of an impact a realm of an impact they have not come to the full understanding they have not come to the place where they are one with that body the bible says there is one body one spirit oh my it is oneness complete oneness if you have not entered into that oneness then the journey has not begun praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. The journey has not begun. 
because this one must put on that one. Praise be the name of the Lord. He must put on that one. This one must put on that one. Must put on that one. So if I have not come to that place, so be careful of those that explain the scripture. Be very careful. Listen. Christ is here and present. Spirit, soul, and body complete. They miss it because they are not in his spirit. They are still in the spirit of the first man. Because if you are in the spirit of Christ, what happened to the spirit of the first man the spirit of the first man will be beheaded completely beheaded so that is why many can be christians they will sit down and hear the word of god for many years all those years is the lord trying to bring you to the remembrance of who you are until you come to the remembrance until you remember yourself until you understand that the Christ is present. Spirit, soul, and body. A new world will not begin. The old world will not end. Because the coming of Christ is not for bed. It is for the end of your world. That is what he's coming to do. He's coming to bring an end of your world. An end of your mind. An end of yourself. That is what he's coming to do. And if he's not present, it's not going to happen. So he must be present. Spirit, soul, and body. No matter what the devil tries to tell you, the devil may want you to look through the eyes of the dead man, the first man. Because you know who you are. You have the sword of the spirit. What do you do? You cast down that imagination. You cut it off. Amen. You cut it off. Man, you cut it off. There's something I want to show you quickly. But before I do that, I want you to understand this. Get this. Don't miss it. It is the man that is the foundation. Amen. The man is the root. And the man is the crown. Because it was out of the man the woman was taken out. Go and read Genesis. It was out of the man. Out of the man the woman was taken out. So today, if, he's, if the soul, if immortality is not coming out of Christ, then it is not immortality. It's not. So he's bringing us out of himself. The real you is in Christ. The old you is passing away. And the new you is being revealed. So immortality never have a day started. We only came to be aware of it. It is eternity being revealed in time. That is what immortality it is so those that tell you that it is now that is being complete they don't understand what it is it has always been praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. in the days of paul it is there in the days of peter it is there even in the day of adam it is there go back to genesis there are two trees. The tree of life, that is immortality. That is eternal life. And the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. So the problem is man was blinded to it. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said the world, the world will not see me. They will not see him. The world will not see me. Even him being present, the world will not see him. Because the world has their expectation. Their mind is made up. There are things that are brought out of their heads. 
There are different, different things, different belief that is brought out of their heads pertaining to Jesus, which is not true, which is not the reality of who he is. You must go back. Go back to Jesus. Go back to the new created man. Go back to the heaven and earth that is created and begin to draw out the real vessels of who Jesus is. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hmm. There have been a ground out of which so many things we are drawn out. So many things. There is a ground that is prepared already. Prepared by God Himself. It is that that is being revealed. That is the one that you must put on. So you put on the completeness. That's why Paul said we are complete. In Him, He is our life. He is our immortality. He is who we are. He is our nature. He is everything. And we must put Him on. Praise be the name of the Lord. Now let's go back to our text. I hope we understand that. So don't allow anybody by any means to teach you anything separate. The body of Christ is one and you belong to that body and you are complete in that body. Amen. Don't allow anybody to, to tell you, you have to do this to be complete. You have to do that to be complete. No, there is nothing you have to do. He has already done it. So you are complete in him. The only thing you need to do is to bring that completeness and judge the deceit that is in this deceived nature. You judge this world. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You judge this nature. When you begin to judge this nature, when you begin to correct that which was wrong, what are you doing? You are bringing reconciliation to the nature. You're bringing reconciliation. So you are reconciling this. So you are destroying that which is a lie. And reconciling it back to that which you have seen in Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is how reconciliation comes. So if it's not Jesus bringing the reconciliation in your soul, then it is not a true reconciliation. If the reconciliation that you that is happening in your soul is from any church system, it is just a law. It's a law. You will just end up in the wilderness system of that church. So the reconciliation must be by Jesus Christ himself. If it's not Jesus, you cannot be reconciled. If the book of life is not open, if Jesus Christ is not revealed to you, then your book cannot be reconciled. And if your book is not reconciled, how are you going to see well to reconcile another man's book? You can see well. And that is the condition the world has found themselves. They have been in operation of gifts. Once the anointing ends, that is the end. They are back to their old selves. Nothing is happening to the nature. Nothing is happening to the roots. Nothing is happening to the tree. Instead, Christ is locked out, blinded to them. They are blind to Christ. So that's why if you shout from now till tomorrow, they won't see him. They won't hear him. They won't even understand. And that's why they are not bringing forth fruits. That's why they cannot reconcile. They cannot be reconciled. Because they be here reconciled to God. How can you be reconciled when you are still in the spirit of the first man? You can't be reconciled. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Corinthians 15. 
We may be in a hurry about this immortal body. You don't need to be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Just follow him step by step. Because it is through that immortal body that you can bring reconciliation to this body. That is through that body that you can reconcile this body. So that's why Paul said, let's go back to where we stop. Verse 42. Verse 43, we've done 43, then 44. That's why he said, he said there is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. So listen, if you are not spiritually risen with Christ, seated in the heavenly places, you know what it means? Last week, it is called superimposed. It is he that is superimposed, seated in the heavenly places that can bring and establish the kingdom of the Father in his earth. That is the only time you can bring reconciliation in your earth. And when your earth is fully reconciled, then you will feel the power of resurrection in your soul. Your soul will, will feel lively feel lively you feel that strength in it because it has been reconciled that which was weakening it has been beheaded it has been taken away Amen. praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. so now he says there is a natural body there is a spiritual body now listen if you are spiritually blind you cannot be able to bring the reconciliation of Christ to this natural body. You cannot. You cannot reconcile this natural body. Now listen. Let's go to Genesis. Let me show you something in Genesis. We're going to, I'm going to take some of your time this morning. A little of your time. So don't remind me when the time is up. I know. I have the time here. I'm going to steal from your time this morning. Now let's go back to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Watch this. Watch this. From verse 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field upon thy belly thou shalt go and thus thou shalt eat all the days of thy life and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel unto the woman he said now watch this is where the woman comes. Who is the woman? The woman is your soul. The woman is that nature that is weak. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. The body that is weak is not this flesh. It's not this flesh. It is the nature of the spirits. Let somebody say amen. Amen. It is the nature of the spirit. It is the soul that is the body that is being spoken of. And it's still that woman. That is the condition of the heart. The Bible says the heart is a ground. And the ground that is not a good ground will not be able to bring forth seed. So many things is going to choke the seed of God in that grant. It's going to choke the seed of God in that grant. It cannot be able to withstand test of time. It cannot be able to withstand prayer. But the good grant will bring forth all the three seasons, in all the three seasons, in 30, in 60, and in 100. All the three seasons, it will bring forth its fruit in its season. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now watch. 
This was the woman. The woman is the soul. You know, the Bible is written in symbols. The woman is not your wife. It's not the female sex. The woman is your soul. It's your heart. It's a ground. It's a mother through which the seed is bringing forth. So now, unto the woman he said, see how the woman is going to be reconciled. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall have rule over you. So that is where the soul comes in. When you go back to Revelation 12, you see the woman. What was the woman suffering from? He was suffering from child bath. So there is a reconciliation that is going on. That is a salvation that the soul is being saved. The ground is being reconciled. The heart is being reconciled. The soul is being changed. It's going on. It's happening. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a bringing forth of the man child. He told that woman here, he says, In sorrow, in sorrow, he said, I'm going to multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. And that is exactly what we are going through. We are going through that child's birth, that reconciliation. We are going through that change. And we are already obedient to Christ, our husband. That's why I told you, you must be one. In spirit, on the last day. John said, he said I was in the spirit on the last day. So it is only that which is in the laws that becomes, that becomes your law. That becomes what you obey. You obey Christ, your husband, your head, your life, your everything. That is what it means here in Genesis 3.16. He said unto the woman, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall have rule over you. Praise be the name of the Lord. Now listen, pay close attention to this. Now this is the child's birth. The child's birth is a different stage from conception. It's a different stage. It's a different stage. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. It's a different stage. Now, when you go to verse 15, it says, I will put enmity between thy seed and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, who, who is the seed of the woman? Who is the seed of the woman? It is the husband that brings his seed into the hearts. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. It is the husband. So before the husband will bring her seed into her, she must have bow herself to her husband. She must have been joined to her husband. Because the seed that is in him is no longer the seed of the serpent. It is the seed of Jesus Christ. Amen longer the seed of the serpent. It's the seed of Christ. You know what our seed is doing inside of, in, inside. 
The seed is beheading. It is through that seed. Listen. Every imagination that is contrary to the seed of God is being cut down. It's being cut down. It's being cut down. Praise be the name of the Lord. So the seed that is speaking about is not a baby that cannot be held. Sword. The sword of the spirits. Pray in the name of the Lord. Is a seed that can be heard. A seed that can cut off the head of the serpent. The seed that can put to death your first man, your first husband. Praise be the name of the Lord. It is the seed which is Christ himself. Praise be the name of the Lord. The husband himself. Mine. So you see the stages. And that's why Paul said, he said, he said this corruption corruptible must put on in corruption this mortar will put on immortality then you begin to experience the change praise be the name of the lord you see man is male and female jesus is male and female praise be the name of the lord as christ descend into your spirit and the spirit of your mind has put on that incorruptible world praise be the name of the Lord has put on that world and out of that world there is a new nature a new nature is risen out of that world praise be the name of the Lord there is a reconciliation that is going on. There is a slaughtering of false imagination. Wide imagination. You begin to remove every seed that has been sowed into this earth. You begin to remove it. And the removing of this seed was not done from the beginning. It was done at the harvest. Praise be the name of the Lord. It was done at the harvest time. Go and read the parable. It was at a harvest time. So the seed that we are talking about is not any house seed. It's Christ himself. Yes. The word of God. And the word of God is life. So when John, when Paul was talking about this man, this is how he explained him. Now let's move down. Verse 45. So as it, is, as it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So it's not an ordinary seed. When somebody tells you, oh, Jesus is born, Jesus is trying to mature. No, it is not that kind of Jesus. It is Jesus, the seed of David, Amen. the son of David. The Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, has his sword cutting off everything that is occupying the home. Is the Jesus that understands that this is the dwelling, the tabernacle of God? Is the Jesus that knows that you are the body, the tabernacle of immortality? It is the one that understands that this body belongs to him. And you descend and begin to remove everyone that is occupying in that home. Take it away. As the imagination is coming down, you are cutting it off. Fulfilling the prophecy that the Lord Jesus Christ told the serpent. He said the seed of the woman is going to behead your, the head of the serpent. Cut it. Praise be the name of the Lord. It's going to be held. It cut it off. So don't let anybody tell you it is a baby Jesus. It's not a baby Jesus. Okay. It is a warrior riding on a horse with the long sword, beheading everything that comes on his way. 
It is the revelation of himself. It is not just a bat. Praise be the name of the Lord. Yeah, yes, we must be born again. But this one is a battle. It's a battle. There are things that we will not just say, but we have to experience it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody is telling you Jesus Christ. Go and read the end of the world, the coming of Christ, the coming of the Son of Man. He's not coming to be bad. He's coming to bring the end of the world. Amen. To cut off the head of the serpent. Amen. To expose the man of sin. To make an end of that system. And now bring in a new world. Praise be the name of the Lord. He said this one will. Paul said he said don't be deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't be deceived. He said that day shall not come. Except there be first a falling away. We've had a falling away. Then the next thing. That man of sin being exposed it's being exposed all the errors are being corrected reconciliation is being made things that needs to be taken away is being taken away praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. so don't let anyone cajole you don't let anyone cajole you immortality has been revealed has brought to light and you are growing in that understanding from glory to glory it has nothing to do with your body if any man tells you that when you die that is when you will put on immortality they don't even know what immortality is let me tell you there are many that die that still don't know immortality is locked to them they don't even know what immortality is they're in the grave they are right there in the grave They've not put on immortality. They are down there in the grave. If grave is the solution, brother, there is no need to preach the gospel. All of us will die and go to the grave and receive immortality. No need to preach. No need to preach. We live anyhow, we die and we we'll go to the grave and receive immortality. If that is where immortality is, beloved, immortality is not in the grave. Immortality is in Christ. And Christ is in me. And he's revealing his nature. Amen. From glory to glory. That immortality, the body we are talking about is the nature of God. It's not this one. This one is given to you to be able to contact this world. To have contact with this world. This one. So it's not this one. So don't look at your skin getting old. And your faith is being weakened. Because this is not immortality. It's not this. And what we are clamoring for is not this one. We are clamoring for the end of sin. That's what our desire is. We want to see the end of wickedness. We want to see the end of the world system. We want to see the end of wicked presidents. Wicked systems, wicked churches, want to see the end of the way of man. That is what we want to see. I want to see the way of God being revealed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope we are getting it. I'm going to stop here, but before I stop, let me quickly explain something to you. I believe we are going to get to part five in this teaching. We have not even started the teaching yet. We have not even started it. We are still laying the foundation. What all to get into Christ? Because it's when you get into Christ, that is when you this world can be reconciled. The system of this world will end. The system of God will be revealed you cannot do that without the spirit of the seven spirits of god you can't do that without that you can't do that without being one in christ you can't do that be without being in the spirit on the lost day you can't do that now listen the 
light and the awareness that the Lord is doing today is raising two people. And these two people, they are in a condition. People in these two conditions. They sleep. So I want to talk a little about this sleeping condition because many are confused. Now there are many there are many that died. They left this side without understanding the whole truth. Without coming to the knowledge of the truth, they died. They were in Christ. But they, didn't, they, they did not come into the knowledge of the truth. Many did not come into the end of the world. Maybe they died uh, in a religious system. They pass away. The Bible use sleep in King James Version to represent them. It doesn't mean that that is the end for them. It's not the end. It's not the end. When Jesus Christ was manifested as the Son of Man, when the ministry of the Son of Man was manifested in the day of Jesus, they sleep. Those that were sleeping, their grave were open. And what happened? They came alive. So as Jesus Christ is being lifted or being glorified, they were glorified with him. So that was a going and ascending. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen. In the ministry of the Son of Man, speaking the complete truth also, the same thing will go on in our day. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the ministration is not ministration to only the living. It's also ministration to those that have passed away. So that's why he's not coming alone. There are many that have passed away from the time of the apostles to this time. He's not coming alone. So when the truth is being manifested, two sleeping people in the two sleeping condition are being reconciled both those that have passed away but they are sleeping and both those that are alive and they are also sleeping many are alive but they are in the sleeping condition they are not aware of the truth they are also in graves in some pentecostal and religious graves so they are not aware of the christ that is within them they are in expectation of christ that will appear one day in the sky they are in the sleeping condition. So the preaching of the truth is not only to you, the living. It's also to the one that are sleeping. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. So as you are being reconciled, the same word that you are receiving is the same word that they will receive. Praise be the name of the Lord. So it is not an event. It is also an event. But this event is not according to human calendar. It is according to the revelation of Christ. So it is those that have entered into that city that can see those that are being resurrected. When Jesus Christ resurrected, when the grave were open and they resurrected with him, they appeared in the city. It is those in the city that saw them. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you have entered into that city also, you are going to see the resurrection of this. You are going to see it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will see it. It is not an event. It is a an event and at the same time it's not an event it is not an event because it is not happening in man's calendar it is an event that is happening in god's own timing it is a spiritual thing that is going on as you are being awakening you are not receiving it alone praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. many are being awakened maybe your generations that are past that don't know the truth they are receiving it because you are receiving it I said maybe. 
maybe the ones that are linked to you as you are being revived they are also being revived so the appearing of christ is not coming alone praise be the name of the lord so don't let some of these things to weaken you don't begin to wait for grave that will open you look for grave it is a spiritual happening it is happening in the realm of the spirit and it is those that are in the spirit that will see it's those that are in the spirit that will see it, that will understand it, that will hear it, and that will receive it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. Then the second one, the death. The death has nothing to do with those that have passed away. The death is a condition where you come to the end of your own self. The spiritual condition where you come to the end of your own self and you cannot come to the end of your own self without being awakened so you must be awakened now let's read this scripture and we close with that 10 minutes is enough to take from you i'm very sorry let's just read this scripture quickly we close with that ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 Ephesians 5.14 Now watch. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. You see, you must be awakened before you will rise up. So, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul separated this, the sleeping and the dead in Christ, joining together with those that are waking. Praise be the name of the Lord. One thing you must understand is there is no system that you must tie God to. Don't bind God to any system. He is God. He can do anything as he wants. He can decide to save a thief on the cross without having to pass through anything. He can decide to do anything as he wants. As he, he deems fit, the only thing that is your business is not begin to analyze for God. You begin to do place for God. As the people of the world, science want to always follow precepts. They want to follow the standard according to their limited knowledge. They want to follow standard. It must be like this. And that is where many fail. It must be like this it must be no all you need is to believe only believe all things are possible that is all only believe whether you are awake whether you are sleeping whether you are not sleeping wherever you are you belong to him only believe shall we rise up we thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for giving us an understanding, Lord, of what immortality is. Amen. Making us all gods that can hear you, that can see your face, that can understand you. Making us to know that is because we are resurrected in the new body. That is why we can be able to hear. That's why you are giving us ear to hear. That's why you are giving us eyes to see. That's why you have given us hearts to understand. Because we are resurrected. We have already put on that new body. Because it is in immortality that you can be able to behold divinity. Flesh and blood have no revelation of you, Lord. It is because of the spirits. It is because immortality has been manifested, brought to light to us, Lord. 
and we can put on Christ and behold your face. Amen. And as we behold you, Lord, we are reconciling this nature Amen. from glory to glory, Amen. from revelation to revelation, Amen. from power to power. Amen. Help us, Lord Jesus. Amen. As many that are still blind to this reality, Father, open their eyes, Lord. Because it's not by what we have done. It's not by how righteous we are. It is by your grace. You have opened our eyes, Lord. So that we can be able to correct ourselves. And when we are correcting ourselves, we are imparting righteousness in this soul. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your name be glorified, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Don't forget to join our meeting, our prayer meeting on Wednesday. Very important, wonderful things. The Lord continue to explain himself, bringing immortality to light. So please don't miss it. God bless you all. Love you all.